teen offers to carry groceries for food, has no idea who he's approaching. He looked back down and turned to see a man staring at him. It was piercing, all judging, all seeing stare. Suddenly, he realized he was crying. Embarrassed, he turned away, completely unaware that he'd been heard. Through an unfortunate twist of fate, Jones was an underprivileged teen who grew up facing all the challenges that come with poverty. He had to think fast if he wanted to survive, and this day was no different. He explained that he'd ride the bus to what he referred to as the rich people's Kroger, in hopes of earning some money to buy food for himself and his mother. Jones' mom had been suffering from medical issues that had put her out of work for years. Now, all her disability allowance was spent on rent. She wasn't coping well. A fact that left Jones feeling as if an iron fist was clasped around his chest. It was around 4 p.m. when Jones hopped off the bus and walked over to Kroger. He prepared for another hour of humbling himself in front of strangers, completely unaware of what he'd encountered today. He made sure to be polite and mannerly. But he knew how he looked, he wore tattered clothes and was essentially asking strangers for money. Some people saw this as begging, others saw it as providing a service but someone else saw it as something very different. Some people saw Jones come their way, and turned the other direction, others turned their nose up at him and ignored him completely or gave him a dismissive, no. His stomach ached while his faith faltered but this was just the beginning. He walked around from person to person, smiling through his fatigue and hunger pains. But when he realized his hour was almost up, his smile faded and his eyes teared. But then something crazy happened. Jones hung his head in despair, then looked up to the sky, praying to whatever God was listening to give him strength. That's when he felt someone was watching him. He turned and his eyes met his. Suddenly, Jones realized that he was crying. The man continued to stare. He asked a few people without luck. But then he saw another man standing alone, organizing his bags in his shopping cart to move them to his car. Jones made his move. It was the man who was staring at him through the window earlier. Jones felt a sudden wave of shame. He braced himself for the look of disgust he felt was sure to follow. But what happened next would change Jones' life forever. White usually shopped around this time of the week and this wasn't the first time he noticed Jones walking around offering help. In fact, he noticed Jones twice before, but he never approached him, until now. However, while White got to know Jones, he was determined to do something more for him. Jones had no idea that this short encounter would only be the start of a life-changing story. Jones was overjoyed by his help. He expressed his thanks for buying him donuts and made his way towards the bus. But White wasn't done with him yet. This kid looked like he had been turned down 100 times. He looked ashamed, hungry, and broken. In my heart, I screamed aloud, yes, but to him, I just chuckled and said, yeah dude, we'll get you some donuts. All the while we talked and he told me how he makes straight A's in school and is trying to get a job to help his mom pay rent. This kid was amazing. The more he learned about Jones the more he couldn't let him go. When Jones told White that he needed to get to the bus stop, White surprised him by offering to drive him home himself to deliver the groceries. The sight that met him, however, broke his heart. When he finally arrived at the house, what White saw absolutely crushed him. Nothing prepared him for what he found. They were sleeping on pads made out of sleeping bags, they had two lamps and nothing in their fridge. Nothing. This boy and his mother were in greater need than White ever imagined. White felt like there had to be something more that he could do. While he had already done so much, the food and supplies would help them out for a couple of weeks, the singer-songwriter still wanted to do more. I'll never forget that hug. It meant more to me than any possession I have. Our God is an awesome God, and we can never be thankful enough for the blessings we have. But that wasn't the end. So he took to his Facebook page to share the story to see if anyone else could help out. He hoped to get enough donations to buy Jones a lawnmower to earn some summer cash before returning to high school. Overwhelmed, White set up a GoFundMe account to raise money for a new home for them, along with a college education for Jones. What happened next is more than anyone could have predicted. He really wanted to help this boy. He created the account, and then it was time to wait. I did the best I could, Barbara said. The past few years, Chauncey has been taking care of me. He's a good boy. I couldn't ask for better. And now their lives were about to change. White explained in a GoFundMe update. 
every dollar donated to Chauncey's Chance was put into a protected trust that will provide them a secure future for decades. In every sense of the word, God has provided. The focus of this is not me and what I did, because I really didn't do anything. I just captured a story and put it online, but our community, Memphis, picked up this family and put them on a platform. And what do they think about that? The impact that those people had on my life can never be measured. I am so grateful for the lives we share with one another, so grateful for each and every one of God's children. I cannot thank you enough for caring about Chauncey. This is his big chance, and you're making it possible. And to think, every day we're given that chance, if we're willing to take it.